welcome you this morning uh, on a 4th of July Independence Day weekend. So, uh, it was a crazy night last night, huh? Lots of, lots of popping and booming in your neighborhood, I'm sure, and there was in mine. I'm still out in the middle of nowhere. So, um, well, this morning, uh, we are going to go live on Facebook in just a minute because we do have many who are not here, some who are watching from home. Uh, but I do want to ask my beautiful wife, Jamie, who's looking very patriotic today, to come and um, make some announcements. Wearing tennis shoes and pearls because I'm American. I can do what I want. Right. <laughs> um, I don't know about you, but I... Exciting July, and so we just look forward to that. Now, at this time, uh, let's take an offering, and uh, you can give online at globalharvestchurch.co. And Jamie, you may. But uh, let's make our offering declaration together, and then let's stand and do this. And I'm just so thankful for everybody's faithfulness and giving in this 
just crazy time. So let's make this together. As we receive today's offering, we are believing the Lord for jobs and better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, favorable settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns, checks in the mail, gifts and surprises. Finding money, debts paid off, expenses decrease, blessing and increase. Thank you, Lord, for meeting all of my financial needs, that I may have more than enough to give into the kingdom of God and promote the gospel of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Amen. So just bring those forward in faith, worship, thanking God for his provision. is faithful. Amen. I'm very thankful today in Oklahoma that we can uh, thank you, Mama, that we can gather and that we can sing. Amen. Thank you so much. Now at this time <coughs> I've been on vacation and it's like that. Alright, at this time let's dismiss the kids and the children to go to their programs. Amen. You know, I was just thinking as we were making that offering declaration, that there's one that we haven't made in a few months that we probably need to get back, but it's just declaring prosperity over our city. And did you guys see that there was an announcement there? So I think that our faith and our hope and our declaration over our city actually cause things to happen. Amen. So I'm just thankful that that's happening. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, praise God. What a morning. Um, what a moment in history. What a week. Wow. What an interesting moment that we're in. And, um, we really need to hear what the Lord is saying. Amen. And I don't know about you, and I, I'm going to address this a little bit, but did anybody have a wild week listening to prophetic words and prophetic dreams that were put out there? Yes. Yes. So I am going to address that this morning. So I know many of you, and I know it from what I've heard, and, and some people had sent this to me, uh, this video, which... I understand has had over a million people watch it this week from a pastor Dana, I think his last name is Coverstone, or something like that. I avoided calling him and um, <laughs> nothing negative. So, um, but you know, I've watched that and uh, watched that at the beginning of the week. And if you haven't seen it, I, I'm just going to give you kind of a disclaimer here. If you watch this video, you will be in fear and hopelessness by the time you get to it. I watched it and I was just like, oh God. Because, and I'll, I'll give you just a little bit of information about it. Uh, this guy is, he's a pastor from Kentucky. He's not known. He, he makes no claims to be a prophet. Uh, from what I understand, he has a church of like 1,800 people. Um, but apparently document this, he had some dreams that so far have come true. He saw, you know, back in December of last year, um, the outbreak of COVID. He saw racial riots and unrest um, in June, I think, or something like that. But then he saw um, a final part of the dream where September through November uh, would be really, really bad. And by really, really bad, I mean Things like Russia and China invading the United States, um, hyperinflation, um, uh, more COVID-19, people hiding in their homes in cities burning. And then he saw, um, he kept seeing the calendar, and then he saw the calendar explode like in November. And 
So he ended that dream basically saying, here's my advice to you. Hoard food, hoard weapons, take your money out of the bank and buy silver and gold. And brace yourself. He felt like the Lord said in the dream several times, brace yourself. Okay. Um, and that's how he ended the dream. So, and he said, I hope I'm wrong. Okay. Well, we all hope you are too. <laughs> okay. So now I want to address this, okay? And uh, because for me, this dream offered zero strategy and zero hope and zero direction. Okay? And the guy himself admitted that he, um, he reads 40 newspapers a day. Well, that is enough to make you depressed and to affect the filter by which you're seeing everything. Now, he was already aware of the coin shortage. It had been happening two weeks before his dream. Now, so when people hear that, because there was a coin shortage in his dream, people freak out and they're like, he's on the right track. Okay? So, but if you're reading 40 newspapers a day, he even made the statement that Antichrist is here. Um, very, very bleak. Okay. Now, here's what we have to do when someone gives a prophetic word like this. Have we not been taught that we're supposed to judge prophecy? If someone gives you a prophetic word, who's responsible to judge that word? Really, you are. If it's a, if it's a directional changing word, it's good to get advice and all that, but how much more if someone gives a word on a national level that other prophets are supposed to judge that word? Yeah. Does that not is that not what First Corinthians, I believe it's 14, I wrote it down, I think it's verse 29. Yeah, 14, 29 says, Let two let a prophet speak and let other prophets judge what they've said. Okay? That is scriptural. Now if People are, there are some gloom and doom prophets right now that are really, really been out of shape. They were so excited about this word. Okay? But for one thing, because it justifies their gloom and doom judgment position. Okay? And so they are very excited about this word, but any other prophet who is scrutinizing this word saying, I believe it's wrong, they're very angry with the word says that we are to judge prophecy. Okay. So I just want to take a few moments, and this is and, and, and this is not to diss Pastor Dana. He himself said, I'm not a prophet, and I've been given these dreams. And he said, and I hope that I am wrong. Okay. So I, I when something like that happens, I I look at the full picture. Prophetically, and I've already been following, and you guys know that I've talked about it. I've read some of the words from people like Chuck Pierce, Charlie Shan, who, by the way, if you've been following Charlie, uh -huh. took a group into the, the chats, yeah. Yeah. Uh, and they knew. Here's the thing: they knew when they went in that they would change the atmosphere and it would shut down. And they went down, and also, you know. One of the pastors in Seattle, Darren Stott, that Charlie ministered with some time before. Uh, you know, they all went to the autonomous zone. They ministered to people. They prophesied to one of the leaders, right? And, and within a couple of days, that thing shut down. Now, a couple of people got murdered in the meantime. Okay. And how many of you remember about a week and a half ago, Wednesday night, when we were praying? And I felt, I said, I felt like the Lord told me to begin praying that some of the leaders of some of these groups that are inciting lawlessness would turn against each other. Well, what did we see this week? Okay, I'm really not trying to be political here. Okay, But everything was fine. The Seattle mayor was fine with the autonomous zone until some of the protesters went to her house 
and protested. And what did she do? She shut this thing down. She said, you put my children in danger. Well, hello. So and she shut it down finally. And, of course, Charlie said, we knew that going in, we would only have a couple of days. And that's basically what happened. Okay. So, I, you know, we just need to, I think we need to continue one of the prayer strategies. And I think it's out of Second Chronicles 20, where Jehoshaphat took the armies of Israel into battle. And the strategy was that they were to magnify the Lord for his loving kindness is everlasting. And as they praise and they worship, those enemies begin to turn against one another. I believe there are many prayer strategies, but that's one of them. And one of the strategies I felt that's out of that passage is we declare and praise God. Now, isn't it interesting what's happened in California? Where suddenly you can't praise God legally. But I'm telling you guys, it is time for, and I am I am a rule follower. There comes a moment where you can't let antichrist systems dictate your obedience to them. Amen. Amen. And, and I'm for safety. I'm totally for safety. You know what? I wore my mask a lot this week. You know, mixed emotions about that, right? But I had been in Texas last Sunday at a funeral, and I came back, and I was like, you know, I'm really not worried, but if I've got something, I don't want to breathe on the lady cutting my hair. Now, I know there are so many mixed messages about all that. So do what you want, right? But, uh, you know, we, we've got to, at this moment, declare and pray and praise. And thank God for our governor, yeah. right, who said, you know, um, I, churches, do, do it, right? <laughs> now, I do want to say also, though, going back to this dream, now, the word, scripture, is filled with warning dreams. If you go and you read from Old Testament, New Testament, there are a lot of warning dreams. Okay, uh, Noah. Noah had revelation from the Lord that he was to build the ark to preserve his family. Right? Joseph and Mary had warning dreams to go to Egypt to preserve the life of Jesus. Jacob Joseph had a warning dream, did he not? That and the Pharaoh had a warning dream. And Joseph interpreted that save not only the Jewish people, but save the most powerful nation in the world in an ungodly nation at that time. Right? Agabus in the book of Acts was warned that there would be a famine and that the church needed to prepare for that. So, listen, I, I believe that there are warning dreams. You know, I had a dream years ago uh, when I was working for a company here in town. I had a dream, and I knew when I had that dream I was going to lose my job. So what did I do? I started saving money. And that's exactly what happened, right? And, and just exactly what I saw in my dream happened. But even, even judgment prophecies in the Old Testament always gave room for hope redemption and restoration. Right? Book of Jeremiah. I know the plans that I have for you. You know, the plans to prosper. All that. At that time, Jeremiah is prophesying judgment because of idolatry. But then he also says, I have plans to prosper you. I don't, that's a strange dynamic, isn't it? Right? Jonah. Jonah sent to declare judgment over a nation that repented God didn't judge them, and this is to me very telling. Jonah was so angry at the mercy and grace of the Lord that God had to correct him because he was mad because judgment didn't happen. Because God was better than he thought. Now, I, I, I think that there are moments of judgment. Okay? Hear me. Right? I don't think that we get a free pass. Right? However, why is everybody always proclaiming judgment on America when there is a righteous remnant in this nation? There is a righteous praying remnant in this nation. And, you know, we're not declaring judgment prophetically 
on a lot of other places that are just as ungodly with no righteous remnant. Why is it always America, judgment, judgment, judgment? Right? It's because America has a righteous call. And so when I, when I saw this dream, I went and read some of the things that Jeremiah Johnson, Charlie Shan, um, Chuck Pierce, what some of these guys are saying. Now, some of them are saying there's going to be some bumpy moments over the next few months. Right? That, that's probably going to happen. Charlie even said, I see blackouts happening in certain cities where even uh, people are going to lose the Internet. <laughs> right, but he says there is a harvest coming that cannot be stopped. Right? There's there's a great harvest that's coming. And so I, I read some of these things and I'm like, these things are this guy's dream isn't lining up with what a lot of proven reputable prophets are saying. Okay? So and I just want to say, it's been even one of these weeks where um, pastors in the city have contacted me who, I'm going to be honest, have no value for the prophetic. And their movements do nothing with the prophetic, but they're extremely worried, not knowing how to respond, because this dream is going through their congregations. And they ask, they're like, who is this guy? And I said, listen, go to my page, I posted all these responses, read what people saying in response to this and it really bothers me that much of the church has absolutely zero need for the prophetic until it's a judgment word or a Jesus coming back word you know why because they're afraid of losing their life and their way of living they have no value for the kingdom of God and the extension of the kingdom of God in the nations and we don't care what God is saying until we're afraid we're going to lose something and then we get bent out of shape, and that stinks. And all it boils down to when something like this happens is they want to preserve their own tail end. And not, <laughs> and not see the kingdom go forth. I'll tell you guys, when, in World War II, when Reese Howells and those intercessors, they were praying against that Antichrist spirit that was operating through Hitler. Not just to preserve England, but they were like, if Hitler wins, the gospel will not go to every creature. And they poured their lives out in intercession. And they stood against an antichrist spirit that had possessed a man and, and was using this to, to Use a nation to bring turmoil to the earth. Right? And so, here's just a few things that I want to say also. And uh, I'm going to read some quotes from some very reputable prophetic ministers, uh, prayer ministers, in response to this dream. Okay? Now, first of all, uh, I've heard a couple of them say, now, you have to realize that when we get a revelation from the Lord, we have revelation, right? God shows us something. But how do we interpret what we're seeing? Because you can see something and it perhaps be accurate, but how do you interpret it? And then how do you apply it? Okay, and those are very, very important things. And I had one response from the man, and if you want to read all these words in detail and watch these videos, I made a response. It made some people mad. I had some people tagging me in their posts on other pages, basically telling me why some of these things were wrong and that they agreed with this pastor. So, you know, and you know what? I could be totally wrong with that. But I'm going to touch on that in a minute, okay? <laughs> but I, I want to miss. A lot of times we see things, and I, I believe this pastor saw something that is the strategy of the devil for our nation. I think he saw what some people call a second heaven revelation. He had insight 
into Satan's plans rather than God's plans. So this is not a revelation from the Lord. Okay, he was shown. Now, I, I, I liked what Jennifer Ivaz said. And um, she said, of course, this is the year of the mouth that many people said prophetically. So, you know, here we are where you can't sing, let's cover your face, right? But Jennifer Ivaz said one of the plots of the enemy in this season has been to grab hold of the mouth of the Christian and turn it into a weapon against the nation. Let's not become a pulpit to the enemy. At the same time, true warnings from the Holy Spirit need to go to the seasoned private intercessor groups and not to the general public. It's a maturing moment for all of us, me included, and I do believe we will rise to the occasion. Okay. Um, Dutch Sheets. Dutch Sheets gave a, a long response. I know Laura posted that. It was on the Elijah list. But one thing that, that he did say, I'm saying to the praying church, do not be alarmed at these words that are coming. Take seriously the fact that there may be more unrest. But just continue to decree and pray for this revival, this awakening, for an overshadowing and hovering of the Holy Spirit over our land. Okay. Now, again, there may be more unrest. If the Lord tells you to go stack up, to stock up some food, then do it. But you know what John Paul Jackson said about that? And John Paul Jackson's even now known for what's called um, the perfect storm that he saw. And I watched it years ago, and he saw some stuff coming on our nation, and he saw food shortages. And so a lot of people who really listened to him began to store up food. But he told one guy that really followed him closely, he said, and this guy's from Alabama, he said, listen, if you don't, he said, I don't think it's going to affect the whole nation, just pockets. He said, if you in Alabama have a lot of food, and Mississippi doesn't, and you're not sharing what you stored up, then you're missing the purpose of this. Johnny Enlow even said, if we do everything this guy told us to do, it will put our nation into a downfall and a collapse. If we all ran out today and withdrew everything we had in the bank and spot up everything we could, what is that going to do? It's probably going to cause a crash and a collapse. Okay? Now, again, if God's telling you to store money, do it. If God's going to tell you to stock up on ammo, do it, and I'll leave your house. <laughs> or I'll call you next time somebody knocks on our back door at 1230 at night. <laughs> Which did happen. <laughs> Jamie, I'll handle it, right? Um, Johnny Inlow gave a really, really strong response to this. Um, and he said, now this is controversial. A lot of people didn't like this. But Johnny Inlow has been saying for years that, to the fact that he started prophesying stuff, and I'm getting a little bit of controversial ground here, but people were even like, are you following Q? Because you're saying everything Q is saying. Now, if you don't know who Q is, talk to Shelly. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but Johnny Inlow said, God is not judging the church. He is judging the deep state and the new world order. Right? He said he's judging. Well, I better not say some of the stuff that he's saying is being judged. You can read the prophecy. Right? And I'm on Facebook Live. Charlie Shamp said, there is a harvest that can't be stopped. And he said, he and he was, and I put the interview with Steve Schultz in, our, in the private group, and they talked, it's like a 45 minute video, and they were talking about the prayer movements and the prayer events that Lou Engel has been doing the last years. Yeah. And he said, it is a seed, those prayer events have been a seed of revival and awakening for our nation. Yeah. He said, you can't say that we don't have a praying nation. Yeah. Now would the Lord say, you need to pray more? Yes. But there's been a tremendous, tremendous prayer movement with things like the send and the call. And even Lou Engel a few years ago did an event in Tahlequah. He was in Ardmore at the Chickasaw Center one night. Several of us went to that. 
Because a friend of mine said, hey, Lou Engle's in Ardmore this Friday night. And I was like, Lou Engle? Lou, Lou Engle? <laughs> and she's like, yeah, you should come. And so I went, and I was just shocked that it was Lou Engle here in Ardmore. And there was maybe, maybe 100 people there. And there were maybe two to three pastors there. In all fairness, a lot of us didn't know. I wouldn't have known if this person hadn't reached out to me. You know, Lou Engle did a call for the Native American nations, Tahlequah. And there's there's been a seed of revival, of prayer that has been going into the earth. Amen. Um, Because we do have a praying church in America. Amen. However, to say all this, I also must say there are schemes of enemy that must be defeated by prayer. I also watched a video with Patricia King and Katie Susan and their the pastor that works with them in their church. And uh, I think since February, Patricia has been very, very concerned for the United States. She's been concerned and here's what she saw. If I'm going to go back and check this out. But she saw a potential Threat from outside forces against the United States while we were meeting, striking several cities on the East Coast. And so she's been concerned for a while. And as she's dialogued with many prophets, their concern has been we are very, very vulnerable as a nation right now. So she contacted Cindy Jacobs, talked to Cindy Jacobs, and they have, starting yesterday, a firewall prayer organization movement that started. I know Shayon is involved in that. Jennifer Ivaz, if I'm saying her name correctly. If not, I'm sorry. You know, but they, they've seen the seriousness and Patricia is like, you know, we're at a moment where we're going to make history one way or the other. Right? Because she, she said, I believe that we're in this moment where God wants to pour out an awakening she said, however, she, she talked about their, their, the bowls are being filled up. We know that there are bowls in heaven, that the prayers of the saints. However, there are bowls that get filled with unrighteous acts as well. I mean, you know, when God would judge certain nations in the Old Testament, he said there came a moment when the iniquity was filled up and he, he released a judgment. So we're in a moment of a tipping point. So I want my prayers to be a tipping point for outpouring. And I don't want my sin to be a tipping point for judgment. And that's a word we need to hear. Because there still is an unrighteousness in our land. This is a serious moment when we have to decide the destiny of our nation. What are we living for? We we either, God is looking for people who will agree with him in prayer, but also in righteousness. One of the things Reese House talked about, living the life of an intercessor, Here's the thing. If you've read Reese House Intercessor, there is no formula for intercession. And we like that. Just give me this script to pray. And his formula for intercession was the Holy Spirit putting to death the deeds of the flesh. And as, as the deeds of the flesh are put to death, there is an authority that arises in our lives. So if we're going to be effective intercessors, we have to allow the Spirit to put to death the deeds of the flesh and unrighteousness in our lives. And as the Holy Spirit does that, it brings many times up us into a, he brings us into this place of authority and he 
gives us authority. Now you can read the book. It'll, it'll be agonizing, I promise you. It's a great endorsement in it. Read this book and die. Right? But, but there's a call. I mean, even months ago when we were praying about what to do in the summer, and I wanted to, you know what I wanted to do? I wanted to go back and do the home groups that we did last summer. Wouldn't that be fun? But the Lord said, no, you need to set up nights of prayer throughout the summer. And it was during COVID, but, you know, we're like, oh, by the summer, we're going to be good. This is, we're going to flatten the curve. The heat will kill it. You know, now, again, they are saying that, yes, the numbers are rising, but the numbers of death have fallen. And that the CDC is on the verge of not being able to call it a pandemic anymore. You do realize when they say, numbers in Carter County is 120. That's from the very beginning. And like 75 have recovered. Okay, so think of it that way. Again, I'm not downing the seriousness of this. Okay. okay. But um, you know, this is a this is a moment and the Lord just laid on me, and that was before we were having some of the things we're seeing now. But I, I knew that there was there was a call to prayer for us as a body. Jamie taught on intercession those two weeks. We had dreams the same night where we were in the nation of Wales. We were in the UK, and I saw a revival breaking out in the UK. And Jamie had this encounter with this, this being that I believe was an angel that came and touched her on the face. Because God's marking intercessors, and he's marking people for the harvest. Okay? So... I believe Pastor Dana saw some of the schemes and plans of the enemy to destroy our nation. But seasoned prophets and intercessors are saying, no, there, that, yes, there's a potential for great danger, but God is calling us to pray for revival and awakening. Okay. And so where does that leave us? <laughs> share, and this is from uh, Katie Souza. The Lord spoke this to her. We must join these intercessions. Now listen, I don't want to be heavy this morning, but if we do not pray and agree with heaven, we have the possibility of losing our nation. It, it, it is in here in a moment, in a moment, where we celebrate independence. As someone put on Facebook, if the government canceled your Independence Day celebration, you just missed the point of the holiday. And I, I don't want to sound like some radical. Right? But but this week, as I, as I listened to that video, and I was just like, God, I'll lay down my life. I was scared. But I laid down my life for my family, my children, my grandchildren, so that they will be safe. You know, many of us have served in the military and were willing to serve in the military, but this is a moment where we've got to lay down our life. But, but it's for the purposes of God. And if you're willing to lay your life down, the life of your children in military service for this nation, which is very noble. But you're not willing to lay down your life or let their children lay their life down for the kingdom of God. That is nationalism and it's idolatry. I know that's a hard word. But we need some hard words right We need to wake up at this moment and understand the seriousness of what we're in. I want to read this passage out of Joel. Joel chapter 2, and this was a passage that God gave Katie Souza as they were praying about setting up this firewall over the nation. And how many of you know, as America goes, 
Now, we're very focused on ourselves as Americans. We think the world revolves around us. But, but there is a call on America. As America goes, the rest of the world will go. I want to read this out of Joel chapter 2, beginning in verse 12. Yet even now, declares the Lord, return to me with all your heart and with fasting, weeping, and mourning. And rend your heart and not your garments. Now return to the Lord your God, for he is gracious and compassionate, slow to anger, abounding in loving kindness and relenting of evil. Praise God. This is even Old Testament. Who knows whether he will not turn and relent and leave a blessing behind him, even a grain offering and a libation for the Lord your God. Blow a trumpet in Zion and consecrate a fast, proclaim a solemn assembly. Gather the people, sanctify the congregation. And this is, I think this is key. Assemble the elders, gather the children and the nursing infants. Let the bridegroom come out of his room and the bride out of her bridal chamber. In other words, no one is exempt from this call. When we're in a moment of national crisis, get the old people together. Get the babies. Even the bride and the bridegroom were exempt for the first year of their marriage. The, the groom didn't have to go to military service and all that. They were exempt from these things, but they said no. Even get the bride and the bridegroom, call them out of their chambers, because this is a serious moment, and they have to participate in this. Call everyone together. Verse 17, let the priests, the Lord's ministers, weep between the porch and the altar, and let them say, spare thy people, O Lord, and do not make thine inheritance a reproach at thy word among the nations. Why should they say, why should they among the people? say, where is their God? Then the Lord will be zealous for his land and will have pity on his people. And the Lord will answer and say to his people, Behold, I am going to send you grain, new wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied and full with them, and I will never again make you a reproach among the nations. I believe that this is a moment where he's calling all of us all of us to prayer. Our Wednesday night prayer times should not be a small meeting. Now, I understand there's work, there's things that we're doing, there's vacations, I get all that. And I, but but we, we were in a crisis. And, and we've made prayer optional. It's put us in the moment that we're in. There's a call for all of us to awaken and to pray. But don't you love the promise here? At the end, the Lord will be zealous for his land and will have pity on his people. And the Lord will answer and say, I'm going to send you grain, new wine, and oil. of an outpouring in every possible way if we begin to cry out and if, as we begin to make declarations. Now, I've been on a prayer call. I'm on a prayer call every week with Dr. Sam Matthews and many other leaders on a Zoom call. Um, it's always very interesting. But, but, but there is something. One leader saw um, Several of us were seeing eagles during that prayer call. Specific things happening. One leader out of Chicago and his daughter lives in Texas and she had a dream where this eagle cut the head off of a snake. But the body of the snake kept flipping throughout the nation. Okay? And so I think we need to continue to pray for the, the death of COVID-19 and any other viruses that may be trying to come in. Okay. And, and that it doesn't mutate, right. but that it dies, okay. and that we all 
much is herd immunity? Well, it's like, I don't think he's actually had it. You know? And so, I also want to read um, Genesis 18. Let's turn there. Just think if we'd had prophetic insight to 9 11. You know that just a few weeks before that happened, Chuck Pierce was ministering in Oklahoma City and he told, told several leaders, I don't like what I feel here. That there's something here that needs to be broken. church missed an opportunity to prevent one of the greatest terrorist led in Oklahoma at that time before 9-11. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm mixing my terrorist events here, right? I'm talking about the Murrah building. Right, sorry. It, in my head it makes sense. Yeah. Right, sometimes my brain gets ahead of things. But, you know, the church in Oklahoma could have turned because we had a prophet that I think the prayer movement in our state wasn't developed enough at that time to stand up and say we can turn this. Right? And maybe even Chuck and his gift was in a different place. I don't know because he felt something. And he felt something We're in a moment where we can turn something. And, and you know, this account in Genesis, basically, the Lord, the Lord shows his friends not only what he's planning to do, but he shows his friends this is about to happen. Will, will you stand in the gap? Because I don't think we realize as the church and the people of God how much authority we have stop certain things. But when we start agreeing with judgment, yes, this is the plan of God. By November, everything's going to collapse. We actually become intercessors calling destruction on a nation. And we need to be really careful about that. But the Lord came to Abraham, right? And he said, will we hide from Abraham? says, you know, basically, Sodom and Gomorrah are about to be destroyed. And he's like, Lord, what if, what if there's only a hundred righteous people? And the Lord said, well, then we won't destroy it. And then he kept going down and down. So what if there's only ten? Well, we won't destroy it. Sadly, there weren't ten righteous people in Sodom and Gomorrah. But because of covenant, Lot and his family There, there's a, a, an intercession that the people of God are being called into. To stand before the Lord on behalf of this nation. And it's not just so that we can have a good life. Right? Because there is a reality. The Bible does promise persecution. in there, right? But, but there's a call for us if we want to see the gospel of the kingdom of God go to every nation, and if we want to preserve a country where we have biblical freedom to worship, we have to war in this moment. And we war in the spirit, and we vote. And is it a 
confusing moment? Oh my gosh. I mean, Kanye announced last night he's going to run for president. I would vote for him before some. <laughs> That's a controversial statement. <laughs> some of y'all are looking at me like, It's 2020, right? But, but, and again, my my thing this morning is I don't want to be heavy because I do believe Pastor Dana has missed it. I think he's seeing accurately again, but there's a strategy that God's giving us, right? But here's where we can miss it, where we say, well, God's in control. And we just try to go living our lives for our comfort. Because we've always lived that way. Right? And God's saying, I'm, he, he's looking for those who will build up the wall, will stand in the gap. His eyes are searching to and fro throughout the earth. And you know what? This isn't just dependent on me. Andy, he'll do it. He'll intercede. Intercessors, they got together this week. Now, gather the elders. Call the children, call the infants, the bride, the bridegroom. Call them out of their chamber. Because no one is exempt from this call, this moment. of the nation. And we won't have it in Oklahoma. Right. Now, Charlie Sand Champ has seen a great, great, great awakening coming out of California. You know, he said, I saw athletes and celebrities and the elect all getting saved. And he said, Sean Bolts has been strategically positioned Hollywood for what's coming. Right? He said, I saw the house of Amy rising once again. Amy Simple McPherson, who uh, established Angelus Temple there in LA. Right? And who um, was even criticized because she was so radical. I mean, I don't know what this next move of God is going to look like. Every new move of God is usually radical to the point that it upsets people a little bit. Right. I mean, what is it like when a group like Charlie goes in and begins to prophesy about the leader of the autonomous zone about his calling? And calling him out of darkness. need to pray that some of these people have some of those Saul to Paul experiences where they get radically saved. What is it? There's, there's Bevelin, I think her name's Bevelin, maybe. African American woman who's been going in to, was going in even before the autonomous zone, preaching also. Radical. You know. There's, there's a great move that God wants to release in California because California has one of those calls where we all see it. If something happens in California, whether you like it or not, it generally sweeps the nation. Look at Azusa Street. Amy Simple McPherson, Bethel. There's an anointing on California for revival and awakening. So we need to stand and we need to sing over California at this moment. Will you hear the call? He 
you know what? It's probably going to cost you something. Isn't everything that's worth anything doesn't it cost you something? I mean, to look like this, you have to go to the gym. <laughs> Gotta bring a little levity, it's getting heavy. Right? <laughs> doesn't it cost you something? Hey, giving out participation trophies has got us where we are now. There's a call to step into this. And not only to step into it to see this turn, and I believe there's going to be, even as God turns this, there's going to be a great, great unity among the people of God. Black, white, Native American, Steve Fish, I'm had a vision where the, the Native Americans were so key in this moment of revival and awakening. And there's this key moment, and I believe the church can come out of it. And, and even some of the things that honestly need to be dealt with, it's way past time that they get dealt with. And, and some of the human trafficking that needs to be dealt with. Now, again, is there some shaking that's going to come in these next months? Yes. Right? We have a moment to see the greatest, greatest outpouring that he has ever known. So, Father, today, Lord, we come before you. Lord, I thank you that we can come before you in joy. We can come before you in hope, and we can come before you in faith. And weeks ago, you just put a greater, greater call, corporate intercession on us. And it sounds really fun in the moment, but when it comes, and there's a responsibility to pray and see the very plans of hell dismantled, the Antichrist spirit judged and to see the kingdom of God come forth. Radical, radical, radical lordship of Jesus Christ. Lord, we just yield to you this morning. Lord, we repent where we've agreed with the throne of unrighteousness Father, we, we join with heaven today. We join with heaven's strategies. Father, we join with the declarations of heaven. Father, that every throne of iniquity, every antichrist spirit, and every antichrist system would be thrown down. Father, let heaven come. We give thanks to you, Lord. For your loving kindness is everlasting. Father, you are faithful to every generation. And Father, let the kingdom of God come forth in our midst. Lord, we're, we know that we're in a moment where the wheat and the tares are growing up together. But Lord, you said that the kingdom would outgrow every other system. And so, Father, we stand for righteousness in this nation. Father, we stand for the very rule of heaven to come forth in our midst today. Father, let heaven come. Father, we declare revival and awakening and transformation over this nation. First, over this city, over this state, Father God, over this nation the nations of the earth. Let heaven come. Let your will be done in America as it is in heaven. And Lord, we give you permission. Holy Spirit, we give you permission to deal with us and put to death the beauty.
deeds of the flesh. Father, that we would live not for our lives, but for the furtherance of the kingdom throughout the earth. Let heaven come today in Jesus' name. And we repent where we've been apathetic. Father, we repent where we've been asleep. Father, we repent even where we've embraced sin. Lord, we repent where we embraced racism in this nation. Whatever that looks like, whatever form, God, we repent of those things. And Father, let righteousness and justice spring up in our nation. need to also pray for Andrew Womack. I don't know if you saw Andrew Womack. They were having a, a conference in Colorado and the Colorado government gave them a cease and desist order to not have their conference. And it was a patriotic conference um, that they were ordered to shut down and they are refusing to do it. I don't know a lot of the details about that. moment, and it is a moment for Joseph's and Esther's to arise in the courts of the king. Amen. So, amen. Well, Wednesday night, um, again, look online if you're interested in, in being a part. I think you can go daily if you want. You do have to pay a fee. The night conferences or events are free at this um, supernatural intensive. Um, I know tonight with Robbie Dawkins in at Crestwood Vineyard, I believe. And then the rest of the week, it's at this Freedom, I can't remember the name. Um, and I think that's in Mustang. So tomorrow night, Mike Hutchins will be ministering. So anyway, bless you guys. Have a great week. Pray, declare, sing, amen, and be safe. Bless you guys.